So in this video, we will look at the actual algorithm that we used for building decision trees, which are used for classification. We will see that it's actually quite similar to the algorithm used for building regression trees. In the previous video, we learned that if I give you a decision tree, I tell you how the tree um, partitions the input feature space, then we can figure out which label to assign to um, each of the regions or each of the leaf nodes. And it's actually quite easy. What you do is you calculate the proportion in a specific region, you calculate the, the fraction of points that land in that region, and you simply um, assign the class that occurs most often in, in that region. But we didn't talk about how we actually find these boundaries. How do we grow our tree? Um, which tells us how to partition our input feature space. So this is actually the tree growing algorithm. We talk about growing trees, building trees, constructing trees or training trees, all of that, those um, terms mean the same thing. And this is the algorithm for growing a decision tree. And you will see that it's very, very similar to the algorithm used for growing regression trees. Um, in fact, it looks exactly the same apart from this one step here, which is calculate reduction in leaf impurity. Other than that, all the other steps are the same. So it is still a top-down algorithm where we start with all the data in one um, central node and then we recursively split the leaf nodes. Okay, and it's still a greedy algorithm in the sense that at every iteration, we will simply split the best node, the current leaf node that gives us the best improvement. And then it's still a recursive, recursive algorithm, which means that we keep on looking at the leaf nodes and then continually splitting the leaf nodes. So let's say we've run the algorithm for a few steps on this um, training data set. It's a binary classification task. We just have two classes, the orange class and the blue class. And we've got two features here, uh, x1 and x2. And we've run the algorithm for a few steps. Um, it first decided to split the input region into two regions here and here. Then it decided to split this region in two. So we've got the top part and the bottom part. And then it decided to split this bottom part in two with a part here and a part here. So we've got all of those, um, all of those regions. I haven't explained how we split the regions, but that's what I will do now. So let's say we've reached this point in the tree growing process. And now we need to figure out what is the best split to make next. So we're at this um, step number two for each of the leaf nodes, so for each of the regions, so we'll consider all of these regions. For each of the features xj, so we will consider feature x1 and x2, and each possible split point s, so we will consider all possible points where we can make a split. Calculate the reduction in leaf impurity. We will see um, in a second what that means. Okay, so let's say we're considering um, this region here. Okay, so for each leaf node, for each region, so let's say we're looking at this leaf node, and let's say we are considering splitting x2, so we're just looking at that second feature. Okay, so one possible um, split position might be, let's say, here. Okay, and in order to know how good that split is, we need some metric, some measure that tells us how good the resulting regions will be. Remember when we grew regression trees, we basically would um, consider a split and then we would look at how much that split will decrease the squared loss, which makes sense for regression, right? You want to see if I, if I split there, how much do I gain um, in terms of my squared loss? How much better do I do in terms of my squared loss? But here we're doing a classification task, right? We've got two classes. Um, just a class one and a class two, which is the um, blue circle and the orange square. We've just got those two classes, okay? So we can't use the squared loss, right? We need some other loss. And in order to do this step here, to calculate how good this potential split is, we need to figure out a way to tell us how good is this region, right? What's a 
metric, a measure for telling us how good that region is. And what we will do is we will basically look at what we can call purity. How pure is this region? Now, there are many different metrics that we can use for um, for measuring purity, but the one that's used quite often for growing decision trees is called the Gini index. The Gini index. Okay, and the Gini index um, has the following equation. So we're going to calculate the Gini index in region M. Okay, what we will do is we will add up for each of the possible classes from little k is equal to 1 up to big K, we will calculate um, P, the proportion, the fraction in that region of that class, K, times 1 minus the proportion of points, of training points, in region M coming from class K. Okay, so this is this is the metric that we will use. So if I give you a specific region, for example, this one, then you can calculate that number. And that number gives you an indication of how good that region is. How pure is that region? To see that, let's just consider the case for two classes. Okay, so we have uh, for two classes. This example, of course, is uh, a binary classification task. So we just have two classes here, a class one and a class two. But the Gini index works for an arbitrary number of classes. But as an example, let's just look at two classes. So we actually, in a specific region, will calculate two numbers. We will calculate the proportion of points in that region coming from class one. And we will calculate the proportion of points in that region coming from class two. Okay, and if it's a binary classification task, then we know that the proportion of points from class two will always be one minus the proportion of points coming from class one. So what does the Gini index look like for, um, for this two class case? We can make a little plot where on this axis, we just put the proportion from class one. Okay, and on this um, axis, we put the Gini index. And you can go and prove this for yourself, but the Gini index would look something like, um, like this. Okay, it's a quadratic function. You can't have a proportion less than zero and you can ha can't have a proportion more than one. So that's the interval in which we're working. And the Gini index will be maximal with a value of 0 0.5 when we have a cluster with a 0 0.5 proportion there. Okay, so what does this mean? That means that if I have a region where the proportion of points in that region coming from class one is one. In other words, if all my points in that region comes from, from the same class, this class number one, then I have a Gini index of zero. If all my points comes from class number two, then it means that PM uh, one will be equal to zero and then we're on this side and again the Gini index will be equal to um, Zero on this axis will be down here That means for this two class problem if all of the points in your region comes from a single class Then you will get a Gini index score of zero Okay, and lower is better. So that makes a lot of sense. For example, in this region here, all of my points comes from class number two, which means that the proportion of points from class number one is equal to zero. So I've got a Gini index of zero. In this region here, all of my points comes from class number one, which means P hat M1 is equal to one, and I get a Gini score of zero, which is also a good score. So let's get back to the decision that we were trying to make. We're trying to figure out in this region here, where is the best position to split if I'm considering um, the x2 axis? Should I split here? Should I split here? Should I split here? Should I split here? Where should I split? So let's say we're considering the split position here. This gives us two new regions, a region up here and a region down here. What's the Gini index for these two regions? Well, actually, this region contains training items from two classes, and actually, um, both classes occurs exactly three times. 
In the re region down here, we've actually got a similar position where both classes occur just once. So actually for both of um, this region and this region, the proportion of points coming from class number one is going to be 0 0.5. And in this setting, this means that this region gets assigned a Gini index of 0 0.5. And this region here also gets assigned a value of 0 0.5. And that's the worst score we can actually get um, um, for the Gini index. Remember, lower is better. Okay, so that's one position that we could pick. We will probably not pick it because the Gini score index, the improvement in leaf purity, if I split there, is actually very, very bad. Let's consider another position. Okay, let's consider splitting, let's say here. Okay, again, we get two regions, a region at the top here and a region at the bottom here. What's the Gini index of those two regions? In the top region here, we get a perfectly pure region. All of the items in that region comes from class number two. The orange um, squares. So that means the Gini index for that region will be, we've got a perfectly pure region, so the Gini index for that region will just be equal to zero. Let's call it region one, that's equal to zero. That would be that the, the Gini index for that for that region. For the region down here, we don't have a perfectly pure um, region, but we're getting pretty close. So here, the proportion of points in that region, let's call it region number two, coming from class one, is equal to four over five, right? There are five points in that region, okay? And of those five points, four of them come from class number one. So on the plot, on our genie plot here at the bottom, we're at four over five, okay? So we're getting a Gini score um, of around that value there, which I believe is around 0 0.32. So that means that this region now gets assigned a Gini score of 0 0.32. And that's a lot better than the situation we had before when we considered splitting year, where we had a Gini score of 0 0.5 up here and another Gini score of 0 0.5 up here. So the green split is definitely better because we get a Gini score of 0 and a Gini score of 0 0.32. So that gives us uh, an average Gini score of 0 0.16 um, compared to the average Gini score of 0 0.5 that, um, that we had when we would split at the red position. There is in fact many different um, options that we can use as a, a metric of leaf impurity. The Gini index is one. Another one we could have considered is the classification error rate. Okay, which would simply be the classification error rate in region M would just be one minus the proportion from the class occurring most often in that region. This would have been another option for figuring out how pure a specific leaf node corresponding to a specific region is. I won't go into the full details here, but the cl classification error rate is a metric that's just not sensitive enough when we're considering splitting a specific leaf node. And that's why the Gini index or other metrics more similar to the Gini index um, are used in practice. The one place where classification error rate is actually used is when we're doing tree pruning. So almost all of the ideas that we talked about for regression trees and using regression trees in practice can be applied in a similar way to decision trees. And that includes tree pruning. So recall that tree pruning was used as a way to combat the problem of short sightedness when deciding when to split a specific region. And it worked by basically growing a very, very large tree. That means that the conditions we consider when stopping, we're very lenient with those conditions. So we grow a very, very large tree. And then what we do is we prune back the tree by considering collapsing the weakest nodes in the tree. With weakest, I mean the nodes that if we um, collapse those nodes would result in the smallest increase in our loss. 
we can use exactly that same idea with decision trees where we grow a very very large tree and then collapse the weakest nodes in other words nodes that causes the smallest increase in um, in leaf impurity and a strategy that's actually often used in practice is to grow the trees using the Gini index. So you grow your very, very large tree using the Gini index and considering stop conditions on the Gini index. And then what you do when you prune back the tree is that you use the classification error rate. And that, that turns out to work pretty well in practice. In the next video, I will show a few more practical examples of applying decision trees to real data.